Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Howie Lim. I'm a senior lecturer from the Department of Social and Preventive Medicine from Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya. Today, I have the honor to give a presentation on HIV PEP and PrEP, the new biomedical technologies and adherence. So here is the, uh, the table of content. Okay, I will start by giving you the overview of HIV prevalence among uh, transgender women. And I'll talk about um, the different kinds of drugs for PEP, PrEP and long-acting long -acting injectable PrEP. And I'll um, share with you the, the literature review of adherence and uptake of PrEP among transgender people. And uh, also the, the um, findings about barriers to accessing PEP and PrEP among trans transgender people and ways forward to improve the PEP and PrEP implementation. So the HIV estimates among transgender women. So this is from uh, a paper published in 2013. Okay, 13, okay, it's a systematic review and meta-analysis. Okay, it shows that the poor HIV prevalence globally is 19.1%, okay? And transgender women have the highest HIV burden of any key affected population. And um, HIV estimates among transgender women Okay, and you can see that you can see this on the map, okay, global map. And for USA, it was 21.7 percent. Okay, um, and for Brazil, it's 33 percent. 33 um, okay, and um, in some other countries, it's even higher, like India, 43.7 percent. Okay, and then uh, so what is PrEP versus PEP, okay. So PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. Okay. So it has to be before uh, exposure. And PEP stands for post-exposure prophylaxis. Okay. So you can, not from, by name, you see that one is taken before exposure and one is taken after HIV exposure. And for PEP, okay, it is used in emergency situation, okay. And it has to be taken within 72 hours. In two hours, okay, after possible exposure, okay, and he, also the indications are li a little different, okay. Prep is for people who don't have HIV and who are at risk of getting HIV, either from sex or from injection drug use, and PEP is for people who don't have HIV but may have been exposed, um, via sex or via um, um, drug, drug use or at work through real stick or other injury. And for, so this is post-exposure prophylaxis, okay, PEP. So it consists of three drugs, okay, three medications. Okay, the two medications um, can be taken with uh, Truvada, okay? And then there's a, the, the third um, medications, as you can see on the pictures on the right. And for PrEP, okay? So uh, we have Truvada, and also we have uh, the newer medication is called V. And now we have long-acting uh, injectable PrEP, uh, which is very exciting, okay? And this study was published uh, just recently, okay? And it was shared uh, during the International AIDS Society Conference last year, okay? Okay, and these trials include uh, cisgender men, MSM, and transgender women. Okay, it's a randomized double-blind, double-dummy uh, control trial. Okay, a long acting injectable cabotegravir. Okay, so it sh shows that participants who receive that uh, long, act long acting injectable PrEP have a hazard ratio of 0 0.34 um, uh, protective effects of uh, HIV acquisitions. Okay, so however, if you look closely with the data, right, the, efficacy, the hazard ratios, okay, if you look at the picture on the right, the, the graph on the right, the, the, the hazard ratios for transgender women actually spans 1.0, okay? So it means that it's not statistically significant for transgender women. And this is because the, uh, the, step, the overall results is driven mainly by the, the result of, the, of MSM, okay? So in this study, five, uh, 570 participants identify a transgender women. So 12.5% of the participants are uh, transgender women. 
So what do we know about oral PrEP use among transgender women? So um, long-acting PrEP is, is new. And uh, I think the studies of long-acting PrEP will, will only come in, in a few years. But we, we do know about oral PrEP use among transgender women. Uh, we know that inclusion of transgender women in PrEP trials has been limited. And if they do uh, get uh, are, are included and they're often combined with MSM. Okay. So these previous studies, uh, previous PrEP trials shows that um, transgender women report less adherence uh, when to PrEP when compared to MSM. And in the IPREX trials, transgender women who use feminizing hormones were found to be to have lower PrEP drug concentration than other transgender participants, perhaps because of concern regarding drug interactions. However, um, stud the evidence so far says, uh, shows that there's no evidence of drug and drug, drug interactions between feminizing hormones and uh, PrEP. And the uptake of PrEP is low among transgender women. So these are the, the three quantitative studies on surveys of transgender women. Okay. Um, the first one was, was um, done a few years ago, published in 2015, okay, of trans transgender women in San Francisco. 13.7% had only, uh, only 13.7% had followed PrEP, and 1% were willing to take PrEP. The second study was also from USA, okay, and 4.7% uh, knew about PrEP, and of them, 5.1% were currently taking PrEP. Okay, and, and so the uptake is very low. And a newer study of transgender women is an online survey of transgender women in Malaysia. Okay, my team um, uh, conducted the study and found, it was found that 20.2% knew about PrEP and 82.5% expressed high willingness, willingness to use PrEP. And this is consistent with other studies that shows that Although the maybe the uh, perhaps the, the the knowledge is low, knowledge about PrEP is low, but once transgender women are informed of uh, of PrEP, you know, how it can um, prevent HIV, they are willing to take PrEP. Okay. So there are um, several quality, qualitative studies that um, examines the barriers to PrEP among transgender women, and these are the the, the common themes, okay, the findings, the low awareness, low perceptions, concern of interaction with hormones, and prioritization of hormone therapy. Okay, so PrEP uh, may not be their priorities. Okay, their priority uh, for transgender women priorities are uh, hormone therapies, and there's also contextual factors such as uh, PrEP stigma, because taking all the PrEP may be seen as uh, is for to. Um, to engage with uh, risky behaviors, you know, um, you know, then you become a, a promiscuous person, sexually promiscuous. And um, there's, a, a, there's a lot of medical dis distrust, medical mis mistrust or distrust, okay, of uh, the healthcare providers because there's a lack of, um, uh, uh, there's uh, cultural competencies among the healthcare providers. The cost, is, is uh, factors um, where for transgender women who don't have the means, financial means to pay for, for PrEP. Yeah? And this will be a barrier. And um, however, economic uh, marginali marginalizations of transgender women, for, for those who have to engage with sex work and uh, um, doing uh, sex work that involve condoms and uh, uh, condoms sex, okay, maybe uh, facilitators for them to take uh, PrEP to protect itself from getting HIV. Okay. And, um, and also the um, one important barrier is the lack of trans-friendly or cultural competent services, which I will elaborate more. Okay. I just want to share with you some uh, the, the experiences of tra transgender women uh, in Malaysia, so where I'm, where I'm from, okay? So discrimination and stigma kill transgender, not HIV. And my mentor, uh, you can see on the top right, uh, Prof. Adiba, he says that uh, Malaysia's HIV stigma is stronger against LGBT individuals than uh, drug users. Okay. So all these uh, contextual factors are very important okay, because transgender women are constantly exposed to um, 
transphobia, stigma, and discrimination. And this is the latest example in Malaysia. So uh, this uh, uh, transgender uh, entrepreneur had, had to leave uh, the country. Okay, she, she went to Australia because of uh, uh, she experienced violence um, by the religious authorities. So what are the, uh, the ways to move forward, okay, to improve PrEP and PrEP implementation for transgender people? So first we know that gender affirming services are, um, are very important, okay, to, um, to increase the uptake of PrEP and PrEP, okay? And that sometimes it's not, uh, it can be as simple as uh, acknowledging the gender identity, okay? And, uh, and also it can, uh, it can also include offering uh, for example, gender assignment surgeries, okay, provide hormone therapy services. Okay. PrEP and PEP should be part of the continual care of HIV SDI. Okay. I'll, I'll also elaborate uh, later. And training of healthcare providers on PrEP and PEP and the trans issues. So, so far I've been talking about PrEP uh, and PEP, PrEP mainly okay, among trans women, and very little is known about um, PrEP among trans, trans men. Okay and more research and services for trans men are needed. Now, I'll share with you two, two uh, examples of trans-friendly um, clinic in the world, okay? So first is the Tangerine, Tangerine Clinic from Thailand. Okay, if you look at the, the package, the comprehensive ser service package, all right? You have more than 10 services, okay, on the right-hand side. And PrEP, PEP, PrEP and PEP is only one of them. So it has it offers counseling on HIV, STI, and hormone use, okay, which is important to uh, transgender women and men, and also it has uh, referrals for gender affirming surgery. Right. So, so not only that, uh, transgender also employs trans transgender staff. Okay, it's a, a truly a purely peer led uh, model. Okay, so it has transgender staff who are living with a HIV who understands the issues. Yeah, uh, important to them. Okay. So Tangerine has also worked with popular transgender social media influencers to reach online transgender women at, who, who are at risk for HIV infection, including youth and trans youth and first time HIV testers. Okay. The second examples are from the uh, UCSF, San Francisco, transgender care. When you look at the, uh, the services they provide, okay, so the list right is comprehensive, and you have uh, in the middle you have hormone therapies and gender affirming surgery. Okay, and where is HIV prep? Okay, is um, is included in primary care. And now I'm going to talk about the HIV care continuum, um, specifically on prep continuum. Okay, this uh, study, this study was done by uh, the team from Thailand. Okay. Um, so so you can look at three parts, the overall transgender woman, the, the PrEP continuum, start from HIV testing, right? And those who test negative, okay, there's, uh, there's opportunities for you to screen for PrEP, okay? And then, and then for those who are, offer, who are eligible, you offer PrEP, okay? For those who are um, offered, have to, they have to accept PrEP, right? So you can see from each step, there's a drop off, okay? Right. And for each drop off, there's opportunities for implementation science, okay, you know, to improve how to implement and, and the, the scale up of uh, PrEP among transgender women. Right. So you can see from uh, those who offer PrEP and those who accept the PrEP, there's a 43.9% of drop, drop off. So you want to know why people don't want to accept PrEP, okay, for example. And if you look at the, the, the cascades okay, by age, 25 by age, so it seems that transgender women who are above 25 years old, they have, they have better cascades okay, compared to younger ones. The younger ones, especially those who, um, who accept PrEP, is very um, low, right? There's a big drop off from those who offer PrEP to those um, accepted PrEP. And the Fenway guide uh, has, the Fenway Institute has the guide to, uh, for training to offer transgender and gender diverse healthcare. 
in summary, biomedical technologies are available. Okay, PrEP and PEP are actually not new. Although long acting injectable PrEPs is, is very new. Okay. However, there are barriers to HIV prevention services and treatment, especially among transgender women. And PrEP and PEP should be offered as part of the comprehensive gender affirming services, like what you see from Tangerine Clinic and also from uh, San Francisco. So trans competent clinicians are needed okay, in order to increase the uptake of PrEP and PEP. And peer led model may increase uptake. I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators uh, from Yale Mahito University and Maastricht uh, University. Thank you very much for your attention.